Hey guys, welcome back to Nat One Videos. So you might be wondering why I am looking at some gameplay footage from Call of Duty Warzone, and the answer is this awesome monolith. My friend Dave uh, from Dave Hanna Illustration YouTube channel is an avid gamer, and I often watch him play this game while we are chatting about our various projects. I asked him if there was anything cool in the game that would be a challenge to build, and he showed me this, and straight away I was interested because to me. This monolith screams Necromancer's Tower for d and I'm very grateful to Dave for flying head on into a war zone, risking life and limb just to get me this footage. So yeah, Necromancer's Tower inspired by Call of Duty Warzone. Thankfully I recently got gifted a Proxon hot wire foam cutter because quite frankly I don't think I could attempt this build with a carving knife. Anyway, mission accomplished, footage obtained, time to make a swift getaway. Okay, let's get started with this build. I scanned the internet to see if I could find any schematics or measurements for this thing, but with no luck, so I had to resort to using this very handy measuring caliber. By pausing the footage, I was able to make measurements that were relative to each other and scale it to a manageable build size. I made some slight adjustments to the pillars so that my final piece will let more light through. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about that later. So my piece is inspired by this tar. It's not gonna look exactly the same. Okay, so I have made some measurements. I don't even know if I'm in shot here. Um, and yeah, just comparing the measurements on, on the structure. And then the rest is gonna be eyeballing and hopefully I pull off this project, we'll see. But yeah, this is how I organize my notes are. I don't know if you can actually see that. Um, yeah. Let's try and build this thing. So I'm building this monolith from XPS foam, which is a perfect opportunity for me to use my new Proxon, which I mentioned earlier. Feels good to finally break it out uh, on a build that I'm really excited about. I cut out some four centimeters by 24 centimeter lengths of one centimeter thick XPS foam. I'm only using one centimeter XPS because that's what I had readily available. I then used the measurements I took to draw an approximation of one of the small pillars in the structure to use as a template, then cut out eight more pieces of foam. In previous builds, I've used hot glue to stick my XPS foam together, but with these pieces, I wanted there to be no visible gap and wood glue makes for a very tight and strong bond. I used the template for the small pillars as a template for the larger pillars in the structure also. They are almost exactly the same, but just a lot taller, and also for the pillars over the two arches in the monolith. Again, these are very similar, but have the base part of the structure removed so as to make way for arches instead. Okay, so I've just cut my longer piece uh, and it wasn't a very steady cut, it's a bit rough but uh, it's still going to be okay for my template piece um, because I can compensate for that just by straightening out the line with my pencil. Time to transfer my pillar design onto my prepared XPS foam so that it's all ready to cut out on the Proxon. I've got all of my spires I'm going to call them cut out or sorry drawn out and um, they've been glued with wood glue um, so they're double thickness and now I'm going to see if this proxon cuts through the double thickness and the wood glue without any problems um, according to Gerard boom it should be fine so uh, let's adjust the temperature I'm going to keep it on a low temperature when I get a new tool that I have never used before, there's always a little bit of nervous energy mixed with excitement at getting to play with a new toy, and the Proxon didn't disappoint. It's really intuitive and easy to use. I think I'm sold. Okay, it works just fine. I am going to have to sand some of the edges, but it works just fine. I don't know if you can see those rough edges. Um, I want them to be like this, nice and smooth. And so the way I'm going to fix that problem is with sandpaper. So I didn't have a fine grit sandpaper. Obviously things are a little harder to get on time at the minute, so I had to settle for a slightly rougher finish than I was hoping. Okay, so I've been sanding for a good half an hour, 45 minutes, and all of my pieces are nicely sanded this way, so all of those little grooves that I got with a Proxon 
um, are, are gone and that's great but the problem is that in the computer game you can see that these also have a side profile that tapers in like that uh, in several places so that's what I'm gonna have to do next I'm gonna have to get my pencil and I'm gonna have to draw in that and then I'm gonna have to sand into that mark as you can see at this stage I have moved into fully eyeballing the project going for a build that is recognizable as a monolith but starting to lean into my comfort zone a little more just flowing and trusting that the result will be good I considered sanding the curves because these spires don't have flat bases and I was worried that I wouldn't be able to freehand a steady cut on the Proxon. Once I got started though it seemed to go okay, uh, but again I knew I was going to have to rely on some sanding to get the smooth gradient that I wanted. And it works. Uh, obviously more sanding to do, some unevenness and stuff like that. But yeah, I am going to cut them all like this. <gasps> Starting to get there. All the profiles are cut, so I'm just gonna come back when this is all sanded and hopefully these edges that I have screwed up really badly are going to be nice again. Okay, see you in a bit. I have sanded all of my pillars and yeah, they'll, there's still a few little rough bits but they will look great once it's all painted up. And I'm just gonna put those to one side now because it's time to work on the base. And for that, I need the base to be 15 centimeters across and I just went and looked in the kitchen and thankfully this bowl is pretty much exactly 15 centimeters so this bowl is going to be my circle for the base. I seem to keep using kitchen crockery for measuring stuff in my builds so if anyone fancies going and having a count and puts the answer in the comments below you win nothing. Uh, nah, maybe I'll give you a shout out in my next video. Time to see if all of the pieces that I have cut work together and to do this I used a circle of XPS foam and measured my spacings for the spires. I then cut out grooves to hold the spires temporarily so that I could see if I was happy with how it all sits together. This meant that I didn't have to glue anything down whilst figuring out my arches for the two doorways on either side of the build. Once this circle has served its purpose I will be cutting it up again and only using the outside rim within the final project. Okay, so I went ahead and I kept on crafting and I forgot to do some filming. Um, so in these two uh, parts here, there is actually arches and I want it to be a curved arch. So I need to basically layer up some bits of XPS foam like this on top of each other, glue them together, which I've done and clamped one like this. And then that way I can curve the arch this way, carve out that way, and curve it at the back as well, and it'll be the right shape. So this is going to sit overnight, and hopefully tomorrow will be ready for me to cut and carve. Once the XPS foam that was glued for my arches was drying, I cut some circles out that I was going to use to stack up on top of each other to build the base of the monolith. Okay, so I've got all of the circles for my base. This is going to be sanded off at the edges into this line. So from about this line to that line is going to be tapered down, sanded. Uh, and then all of the pieces just slot in to their various locations, like so. But yeah, you can start to see it coming together. Onto the arches and here is where I realised that I had made a pretty silly mistake. I had an image in my head of how deep the arches should be and had glued the pieces together anticipating a much deeper and curved final shape. But as I started comparing to my actual references I realised that the way I had been imagining it was all wrong and I could have just used two pieces of 10mm XPS foam instead. Hey ho, you live and learn. There are always mistakes on a build, at least in my experience. You just carry on and work around them and if you are clever enough you edit your YouTube videos to make it look like you intended it that way the whole time. Don't! Regardless of the mistakes I pushed through and ended up with some arches that fit into the project really nicely and no one would have ever known. Anyway, when it came to gluing the base pieces together I decided to drop back to using hot glue even though the bond with the wood glue is really good and leaves no gap. It does take a lot longer to dry and I wanted to advance with the build. 
I had a solution in mind for the gaps anyway. Once it was all glued, I tapered the edges to match my reference images and sanded it all down. At this point, there was hardly any noticeable gap, but I wasn't sure how it would look once I'd painted it up, so I decided to use some polyfilla all the way around the base, and then of course I would sand it uh, when it was all dry. This way I could be sure to get my base looking like it was one big solid block of concrete. I'm not sure if I've even mentioned yet that this build is going to have a light feature in the centre. Even though it is based on the Call of Duty Warzone monolith, when I use it for tabletop games I will be using it as some kind of necromancer's tower and in the centre of it I want to have some kind of portal to another dimension. As a bonus, when I'm not using it for gaming it is going to make for a pretty badass bedside lamp. To create the light feature I used a two part epoxy resin, which was a one to one ratio mix, and I added some violet resin dye. I then let the resin sit for about 5 minutes to let any bubbles that had been introduced by the stirring process to rise to the surface. To pop the bubbles I carefully used short blasts from my heat gun. I didn't want to just have a full blast of hot air as it's a glass jar and there might have been a risk of breaking the jar. Adding some of this shimmering purple mica powder to the resin was the final step. Instantly when I mixed it up it started to look really spacey which is exactly what I was aiming for. I don't know if you can see that, oh but yeah. Look at that cool colour in there. That's going to look so good with light coming through it from the bottom. Okay, so one of the things that I'm going to do is uh, to finish this all off. All of the pieces are cut now, everything's ready to go. Uh, kind of. Um, I, I've got a small pack of coloured LED lights. Um, and I want to carve this base with a big circle so I can stick the LED lights all around the inside of this circle and have it shining up through these circles to have this resin in the middle and then that'll shine up and create some quite atmospheric looking lamp kind of thing. That's where I'm going with the whole thing. I don't know how long this is going to take, but I have an idea to make it go quicker. And the idea is, oh, let's put that safely. I'm going to use this to drill the hole in there. And then I'm going to detach the hot wire on the hot wire cutter. And I'm going to pass it up through the circle. And I'm going to cut the circle out from the inside. That's the plan anyway. So let's see if it works. Well, that was quick. Yet another job, I am very grateful to have a prox on to execute. If I was to carve this out with my whittling knife, it would be super messy and take a lot longer. Ta-da! That's exactly what I need. Okay, I've been looking forward to this part. Time to take the resin out and it looks really, really nice. Uh, let's see what it looks like. Very cool. Oh, there's one little dent there. Wonder if I left something in the in here. Ah, there's a dent in the mold. Oh well, uh, there's not a lot we can do about that. <gasps> That's going to be very, very cool. And with the LEDs underneath, coloured LEDs. That's going to look so cool. Uh, so that's going to be the centerpiece of this lamp shining up through the monolith. So I was a little disappointed to end up with a little dent in the surface of my resin, but that just goes to show you how awesome resin is at taking exactly the shape of the mould. Next time I will be checking my mould for sure. I didn't want to spend another whole day waiting for a second pour of resin to try and fix something that no one else will probably ever notice, so I just moved on with the build. At this point I really have all of the bits and pieces ready to go and it was just about putting it all together in the right order. I glued my resin disc into the top circle of the XPS foam with hot glue on the bottom side and because I didn't want any light seeping up around the edges I painted over the hot glue with some black Mod Podge. Having a different colour light coming up around the sides would have ruined the look I think. Fixing in the LEDs was really easy. I drilled a hole through the side of the base and pushed a power socket through until it was flush and I hot glued it into place. I then cut a circle of cardboard to fit into the bottom of the base. LEDs have a shelf life and when these eventually die I wanted an easy way to remove the old lights so that they can be replaced. 
The LED strip has a sticky backing on it so it's simple to install and once they were in I glued on my top and it looks pretty sweet. I think I could have added more colour and mica powder because as you can see the LEDs are a bit visible which isn't a major issue but now that I'm watching along doing this voiceover I think that maybe I could use some kind of white parchment paper on the underside when I'm trying something like this again. The colours from the LED strips are really cool but as you can see they are bright enough to shine right through the XPS foam and that's where the black mod podge and final paint job will come into play. All that is left to do before the paint job is to glue the whole thing together and as this process is pretty self explanatory and you can see exactly what is going on in the footage, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to give a shout out to my very first patrons. I've had several requests from people over the recent months saying that they love what I'm doing and they want to contribute and help the channel to improve and grow and that is so encouraging. Lo and behold I already have my first three patrons and I just want to say a massive thank you to Tina, Tycho and Carl. You guys are awesome, I'm really grateful for the support and so glad that you're finding enough value in my content to support me in this way. As it happens Carl is Carl from the Carl Makes Stuff YouTube channel so please head over to his channel and give him a sub. I have left a link to Carl's channel in the description below this video. Any support that I receive through Patreon really does help. I mean I go through Mod Podge, Foam and Paint at a pretty scary rate. On Patreon I will be offering some different bonuses and extras as a thank you for getting behind me as I try to bring fun tutorials and builds for the community. If you would like to be part of this and support me on Patreon I would love to have you on board. You are most welcome. Awesome, that is the build done. Um, yeah, it is, and it lights up as you can see, which is great. And now all I have to do is paint it, and it's finished. Wow. Black Mod Podge, graphite grey. Neutral grey value 5. Uh, yeah, and there is the neutral grey is on, but as I was painting the neutral grey, is I for realised I forgot all about my stairs. And I've been busy, so I forgot to film how I made my stairs as well. So I'm just going to show you quickly. So to make these little steps that I've already glued to my project, uh, you just get a little piece of XPS foam. Um, this one was a uh, one that I tried earlier, um, and I um, have put this to half a centimeter ish, and we just go like that. And once you've got it to the right size, you pull it to the side, and you've got your step. And then you glue them to the project. I added some yellow ochre and titanium white to my neutral grey so as to mix up a more light yellowy grey that I felt matched the colour of the Call of Duty monolith a bit better uh, than my usual stone colour choices. At this point I thought it was finished uh, but I showed a preview to Tina who as it happens is a pretty amazing crafter and she advised me to give the whole project a black wash. So I added a little brown paint and black paint to some water and dish soap and I washed the whole thing. And that's it, the project is finished. project and I'm extremely happy with it um, as you can see it's ever so slightly different to the actual Call of Duty monolith um, and that's because these pillars are a bit thinner I did that deliberately so the more light could get out from the base and you know into the room 
thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in again I really appreciate especially people um, who are coming back over and over again to the channel and supporting me that way please like the video and leave a comment because that's going to help me out with the algorithm and that would be really appreciated and if you haven't uh, subscribed yet please subscribe because there's more videos coming soon and oh yeah patreon as well i'd love to have you there as well if you can do it thanks so much guys and